when you're called to stand in for another talk, one of the greatest things is that anything that goes wrong is not my fault. <laughs> right? Because I'm asked to stand in. Oh, sorry, nothing is coming out. Not my fault also. You see? You know, okay? uh, that's the advantage that you have. You know? Everything is not my fault. Okay? I've given this kind of talks when, you know, of course, in this case, I'm giving my talk. Uh, I've also done it when somebody else couldn't come to a conference last minute and send me the slides, hey, give my talk. <laughs> okay? So when you're giving somebody else's talk, <laughs> okay, it's very hard. But today, you know, I'm here for PyCon, but I, I still also want to, you know, show you that underneath here, I have my School of Computing uh, T-shirt, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I got my PyCon uh, shirt this morning, so I thought I'd put it on. Uh, okay, so when Mr. Gee uh, dropped me the bomb, uh, because we were, I think Kelvin was talking about okay, bombs just now, not me a bomb, or that, you know, I have to come in uh, and do this talk. Uh, I thought about what I wanted to do, and it was difficult in the, because of, I'm short of time, so I decided a very simple uh, message. Okay? Uh, in the last few years, I, I think those of you who uh, have come to my workshop and some of my other things know I've been trying to push computational thinking for everyone. Uh, I think uh, the early speaker, okay, uh, the first speaker this morning will talk about this, okay, and uh, many other teachers, uh, okay, have been hearing this. So really, I want to push computational thinking to all. Not everybody needs to do programming. Uh, even that, I am not sure, okay. They need to do some programming of some kind, but everybody needs to know computational thinking. Uh, of that, I am fully convinced, okay? And you will see, you know, some of the activities that I do. So, very quickly, <coughs> since the first speaker talked about, okay, what has happened in the past, so I thought I would say something. I've been in NUS for 30, 31 years now, <coughs> okay? And uh, been doing outreach talks, workshop camps since, okay, ever since I came here, okay? Running competitions, uh, started NOI in Singapore, uh, IOI, <coughs> okay? And uh, the ACM, uh, ICPC, uh, all of these things, many of these things I have already let go. Other people are taking over, which is a good thing, uh, good succession. Okay, I've been involved with Code Extreme Apps, a 24-hour hacking competition okay, since uh, 2007. And after, in 2008, we started running our first Singapore programming competition for primary school kids. Okay, and it's still running today. Uh, okay, and this year will be the 12th uh, year that we are running it. Okay, been involved with MOE A level computing. Uh, I think if uh, Kelvin had some issues with the curriculum, then you should have seen the 99 curriculum uh, where I was involved with, and we made a lot of changes. Okay, uh, it was really literary. Okay, memorization of facts because everything was covered at such low level, you know, such <coughs> simple that you, you can't go deep in any area. We covered a lot of stuff. I was amazed at how many things we talk about, <coughs> okay, uh, in that A-level uh, curriculum. Okay. Uh, and I think most recently, okay, I think this is the one that uh, I'm excited about, okay, uh, I've been pushing CT to all, okay, uh, and I think also, uh, I discovered that more and more, as I try to push CT, I'm no longer pushing a message. I'm actually involved in mindset change. The hardest part is mindset change. If we do not make that mindset to change, then everything is difficult. But once you go set about saying that, let me try, let me try. I don't know what that is. It is foreign to me, but let me try. Then suddenly, things change. It is not so hard after all. We start small and we make bigger and make bigger. I'm glad that Kelvin's talk is before mine because Kelvin has done so many things that goes into my workshop. Okay, uh, so let me <laughs> share with you. Now the next few slides are going to be very chaotic because I have very little time. So in order to show you, uh, I thought I would show you what <laughs> are some of the things I have done. Uh, when Singapore celebrated 50 years of independence, I thought, well, I will do 50 hours of outreach talk as my part of <coughs> celebrating that year. Uh, so since this started you know, and took off, uh, I, I went back and counted. Okay, I, I did accomplish them all because the second half of uh, 2015, actually, I was on sabbatical in the U.S. So that half a year I was gone. So I said, I need to clock in 50. 
Uh, luckily, I managed to clock in without even counting those outreach that I did uh, while on sabbatical leave. Okay? Uh, so I'm going to run through very fast. Huh? 2016, 2017, we uh, com participated in the Maker Fair. Those of you who don't know what the Maker Fair is, uh, go find out. Okay, I encourage you to go. The next Maker Fair is in August. Okay, and it will be at uh, One Tampini's Hub. <coughs> okay, uh, I've been doing outreach talks, and so here's an example of an uh, actual talk. Uh, so I'm putting in, basically I'm importing all the front page of every one of my talks. Okay, uh, make a fair. Uh, this one happened to be my fo daughter's uh, former school alumni. Okay, Nanyang Girls High. I, I do uh, at least one talk with that school every year. Okay, sometimes two, uh, sometimes a workshop. Okay, all right. Uh, this is the one I want to <coughs> share uh, a little bit more. Actually, I was trying to look for the one for Dunman High, okay? Because Mr. Gee, uh, back in 2016, invited me to talk to all the uh, KPs, okay, of the school. I later find out KP for the school means all the key personnel in the school, the head of department, uh, principal, vice principal, and all the decision makers. Because end of, at the end of the year, they're going to do a roundup, okay, uh, planning for the next year, and they wanted to come get me in to talk about computational thinking. Okay, I, I thank Mr. Gee for that because it started a very different wave of me. Instead of talking to the students and <coughs> selling the message and uh, talking to MOE and selling the message, uh, I went directly to the schools. Okay? And since then, okay, uh, after Mr. Gee <coughs> one and in December 2016, uh, the following year, Fushun came to talk to me. Uh, why did Fushun came to talk to me? Because they came to my Maker Fair booth. They saw what I was doing and said, you could come talk to our principal, talk to all the key personnel. Uh, so they were actually doing a maker, uh, <laughs> digital uh, maker workshop, but they wanted to come in. And so I gave about 40 minutes short talk on CT. Okay? And uh, subsequently, they invited me back okay, to talk to all teachers in the school, every single teacher. Okay? All right. So, uh, well, look. Interesting things were happen. Okay, while talking to Fu Chun, giving that talk, uh, the organizer of the workshop was hosting Nan Chao, okay, the principal of Nan Chao. Okay, and the principal of Nan Chao came and was looking around the place and saw what I was doing. I invited her. Okay, why don't you come to the final part of my talk? Because after the digital making, I have a roundup and say, what did you learn? Uh, where do you see CT in your digital maker workshop? Okay, so she attended that one and next came an email, why don't you come and do one for me? Uh, so, so I went to do this one and it turns out that Nan Chiao, okay, the principal from Nan Chiao uh, was wondering, you know, how do we do CT and does CT influence us? She later admitted she was an IS graduate from our uh, old <coughs> school of computing. But eventually she decided that instead of just doing CT, uh, uh, programming okay, and uh, <coughs> IT development, she wanted to go back to school and teach. And so I actually indirectly told her, you know, you did not know that IT influenced you even when it is doing it. And that's the power. And that's the reason I want to do CT for all. If you are in CT and you know CT, it doesn't matter what you do, it changes the way you make decisions. So I said, I went to many primary schools. They don't know what CT is, and you ask them want to do CT, they will say, no, that's not for me. But because you have been through that training, you know what that is, and you know it is good for the student. Okay? And that's what we want every single student to know. <coughs> okay? And so what she did, okay? and okay, uh, there are also other stuff. Okay? After I went to do Maker, I uh, combined Maker with uh, Problem solving, okay, and then my next, you know, my future talk to Nanyang uh, included that part. I've also given other talks. So these are a bunch of whole talks that I gave, okay. Uh, this one was with, uh, okay, Innova, okay, uh, JC, they came back. Uh, where's the one that I did for the entire uh, school? Ah, this was the one. This was the sharing that I did, okay. So I had a very busy year. I, I myself clocked in maybe seven or eight workshops already. Uh, okay, since the beginning of the year. Okay? Uh, but this one I like because this is a kindergarten who invited me to come and talk. And it is not just for the teachers, but it's also for the parents of the kindergarten uh, goers. Okay? So they want to come in and listen, uh, hear about uh, computational thinking. Okay? 
Okay, so I, I'll, I'll skip through some of these things. Okay, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my recent city-related activities. Okay, in the NUS. Uh, since 2016, 2015, I told you I went on sabbatical. During that sabbatical year, I thought through, we came up, proposed a course to the university to do computational thinking with no coding. Uh, I'm, if I'm given only one course to teach and sell the message of computational thinking, I cannot do justice to it while also teaching programming, especially to a reluctant audience, an audience who is not quite sure they want to do programming yet and want to be involved. So my goal was to do CT, no coding. Okay. And this course got approved. Uh, we taught it for the first year, uh, first semester in January 2016. Then January 2017, it was offered again. Okay. And uh, later on, I think the university wanted it to be compulsory. Uh, there will be a slide on it later on. So, so this last semester, this past semester, they just ended. Uh, I've done it for all students from the arts faculty. Okay, FASS in NUS, and these are the students who say, this, is, this course is the furthest from my mind. And uh, when I be look, I don't have the time. If uh, I would like to have given that uh, reflections on that course, but I don't have the time to prepare. We just finished all the grading and all that, and all that we don't have. So maybe another time I will come and give a talk okay, about how that course went and so on. But I look at the reflections from the students, okay, because we ask them to write a reflection. And I'm glad that many of them said this. When the beginning of the course, when I was told I must take this course, must, uh, this one is compulsory. Okay? Uh, our university president made it compulsory. Uh, I have no clue. And I said, I thought this is the most useless course of all. I'm in arts, I'm in the psychology. Why do I need to do computing? And said, okay? But towards the end, okay, when we asked them to look at a particular issue and what they thought about that issue, how to solve that issue. And at the end of the semester, I asked them, look at the same issue again, the same paper that you wrote okay, four months ago, three months ago, and now come back and tell us, you know, would you, do you see it differently? Can you see a computational thinking angle in which to attack the problem, to solve the problem? And I'm glad that many of them said, I never thought about it, but this is the new way <coughs> that I've learned. Some of them use my metaphor. They say that I've given their, them a new pair of lens in which to look at the same problem from a different angle. Okay? So I'm glad that a large majority of them said that. And these are issues that, one example, the one that Kelvin gave about food wastage. They thought that food wastage is a problem for which there is no computational thinking angle. By the way, these are art students. Please do not fault them <coughs> okay, at the beginning. Okay? So uh, another... <coughs> Uh, type of issue would be uh, how, how to tackle uh, flooding, okay? how to tackle you know, all of these kind of problems. Okay? Uh, the student chose those projects and chose the issues. Okay? Uh, then I'm glad that if nothing else, the course taught them how to look at the same problem, but now from a different angle. Okay? Uh, I don't have time. I don't have the uh, PPT and okay, uh, the slides for that, okay? so unfortunately. Okay, so uh, I do want to say though, before I end, because I know I will run out of time, so I'm going to put this slide up first. Okay, uh, this is an open call. Uh, I'm very busy, but whenever it involves CT and a workshop and trying to, uh, I, I like to tell people that I brainwash people, but in a good way, in a good way. I, you know, I brainwash them to have an open mindset, okay, to have a growth mindset. Okay, uh, although you know, growth mindset now is also being challenged. Okay, I'm the author of growth mindset. Okay, uh, but having this mindset of saying that I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to fi figure out what this thing is all about, why everybody is talking about this thing, AI, this, that, that, etc., and computational thinking, and see whether it can be helpful. Okay, so if any one of you uh, teachers, okay, MOE officers, or you know, okay, uh, other people want to. <coughs> Engage me, okay? Uh, let me know. Uh, my email is out there, okay? Uh, uh, we find the time, okay? All right, we find the time. I think just like Fuchun, when Fuchun wanted it, okay, for all their teachers, I said yes before I could uh, figure out what the timing is, etc. Okay? All right. So uh, I don't think I need to uh, preach to the choir that uh, computational thinking and all that is useful, okay? So I, I won't preach that. Uh, so instead, I would jump, okay? I would jump, okay? I will jump. Because, you see, I have no time to prepare, unfortunately, so I just drag. But I do want to show one thing. I do want to show you one thing, okay? All right, uh, that I like. 
I don't know whether you've seen this one before, but if you have, uh, okay, bear with me. Okay? I, I mentioned that computational thinking, uh, there are algorithms in everyday life, right? Okay? And uh, including dog training, right? You know, even dog training okay, involves algorithms, right? Step by step. You need to teach the dog very basic commands, then only very complicated commands, okay? <laughs> and things like that. Uh, but even folding and origami chukapi, right? Also, right? How many of you have folded an origami chukapi? No. You don't know what a chukapi is. <laughs> huh? You haven't folded an origami chukapi there? Yeah, yeah chukapi, chukapi, right? Of course, you know, chukapi is a uh, monkey po, right? No. Okay, sorry, this is an inside joke I shared with my daughter. We like to speak, you know, say, can you see why? What it is? Okay, I like to say the word backwards. <laughs> Uh, if you come across, uh, of course, if you come across uh, my students' uh, company, uh, learn to code, code to learn, then, you know, uh, that is a natural palindrome, okay? But this one is not, okay? All right. But actually, I assigned that as homework. For the students who are skeptical about what algorithms is, I assigned that as homework. For an origami, at least 30 steps. I need it to be fed, sufficiently sophisticated so that they, and do, you cannot watch a video. You must look at the instructions on how to fold an origami. And all my colleagues okay, and other people ask me, this is crazy. What does origami have to do with computer science, if anything at all? Okay, and it turns out it does. It turns out it does. Okay? All right. uh, by the way, this is, these are, you know, to show you I'm not lying, these are all the best origamis that we collected. Okay, uh, in a showcase. Okay, all right. Uh, do, the other side are all my really cool origami friends. They invent new origamis. They don't just follow origami instruction. They invent new ways of folding. Okay, and things like that. Okay, Ken. So I'll, I'll skip that part. Okay, but origami do have and uh, share a lot of uh, commonalities uh, with algorithm. So let me do the last part. Okay, the last part that I want to share. Uh, while we do not believe that. Coding is for every single person. I do believe that computational thinking is for everybody. The process, the thinking process behind. Okay? Uh, by the way, the idea of computational thinking and the definition of uh, computational thinking first came out in Jeanette Wing's uh, paper in 2006. It's a very famous paper okay, sent to the ACM. And at the time, the first iteration that came out, okay, uh, certain words were missing. One of the boxes here was missing. Okay, uh, one of the boxes here was missing. Uh, but when I proposed my course in 2016, okay, my co-instructor, uh, Professor Liao <coughs> Weeking, and I firmly believed that that box must be there. So when we proposed that course, we added that part in. And that part was problem formulation, how to formulate a problem. Okay? And so after designing the course, I went back to check the, the search for you know, computational thinking again. And in an updated paper by Jeanette Wing, now with a few collaborators, okay, there was a paper in which they say, now after going through many rounds of feedback and discussion with many people, they added that box right in front, in fact, right at the front. So I think, uh, I think our early uh, guesses were vindicated that, you know, so now we have problem formulation. Basically, given a very, especially for the art student, they look at a complicated issue. There are so many things to consider. How do I narrow it down and formulate a problem that can then be tackled with computational thinking? Now, that skill set is missing from a lot of people. To me, that single skill set is the most important skill set. How do you narrow down a problem and Say that, ah, at this point now, computational thinking can come in and help us solve the problem. And this feedback came to us, the realization that this is the correct thing to do came to us from a student feedback. In the first sec two rounds of giving the course, 2016, 2017, the student said, I actually am a computer science student. I've taken two years of computer science now, mind you, uh, please uh, do not use this example to say that our students are all bad. Okay? So in every uh, place, we have very really good students, and also students are not as good. Okay? 
So this student came to the course. We were wondering why does he want to come and take this very introductory no coding course. But the feedback came and said, I've taken these courses. I've taken some programming courses. I know a lot of things, but I'm still lost when I'm facing a real world problem. I don't know how to put the pieces in to solve the problem, to have a handle on the problem. And then the second sentence said that I realized that what I was missing is problem formulation. How do we take that very complicated problem where there are a lot of issues, nobody tells you that this is an important input, that is not important, etc., and formulate a problem so that in the end we can apply those things that I learned. But then he said that once we formulated the problem, I already have all the tools to use. So what he's telling us is he have the tools, he have the capability to solve the problem, but he cannot, you know, we all say it in many different ways, but we are saying the same thing. It's very big distance from here to here. And that big distance when it comes to a very complicated, complex real world problem is problem formulation. Once we formulate the problem and give you, given this input, that output, I know what algorithm to apply. I can look up the book, okay, whether it is intro to algorithms or the book done by uh, Mr. Lee or the one by uh, Stephen Halim, okay, the you know, programming uh, competition book, okay, or also an earlier one written by another friend of mine from Stony Brook, okay, uh, one of the earlier ones. Okay. The solutions are there, but without you formulating the problem, then you do not know where to look for the right answer. Okay? Now, in addition to this, uh, this is my own invention. Okay? All right? It's not there yet, okay? uh, so maybe I should write to Jeanette Wing at some point and tell her. Okay? Uh, I call this, okay, I coined this items. Okay? items. And items stand for an IT enabled mindset. An IT enabled mindset. If you have an IT enabled mindset, that was the one that came into play with the primary school principal. If you have a primary <laughs> IT enabled mindset, you look at an issue and you say, ah, you know, computational thinking could be used to help that. And that's what had been validated by Kelvin just now. When the principal said, hey, help these guys, right? Come up with an IT related solution to this, right? What is at play? IT enabled mindset. The solution could be, in his case, a microbit. It could be some other things, right? But what you have is, if you have an IT-enabled mindset, then you know how to look for that solution. Okay? Uh, so to do that means, <coughs> hey, where is my slide? Okay, the slide disappeared. Okay, now my, uh, do I see it in my upcoming one? I added in a slide, okay, sorry. Uh, I don't have that picture. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's in here, okay. Because I, I know you all know all these things uh, much better than I do already, okay, computational thinking, okay. Where is that picture? Ah, this is the one, okay, all right. So this is the picture, okay. So in the future, okay, the next time, okay, if somebody have an IT-enabled mindset, you see something happening. You see something happening, you know, whatever is happening, okay. In this case, I just show something. We know what's happening out there. Uh, you should be thinking to yourself, okay? All right, you should be thinking to yourself. Is there an algorithm hidden inside in here? Okay, should there be an algorithm hidden inside there? And should I be the one, you know, who will program the solution? Maybe an algorithm will be helpful in solving this problem. Okay, and it applies everywhere. I would want to end with one example. Okay, one example. For many years, ages and ages, libraries were run in the same way. In the same way. You borrow a book, you go to the library, you go to the shelf, you pick up a book, you bring it to the counter, you then say, I want to borrow this book. Somebody will write at the back of a book, there is a piece of paper, put a chop in there to say when it is due, say, give you that book, okay, and they will record it somewhere, etc. It has been done like that for ages and ages and ages. And around the world. I've been many libraries, borrow books from many different places, all work about the same way. Okay? In Singapore, something interesting happened. Thing ha the interesting thing happened is that we brought in somebody from IT, okay? Christopher Chia, to head the library. It is a crazy decision. In any library in the world, in a Library of Congress in the United States, if they need a CEO for a library, they find another librarian. They find, right? 
Okay? But in Singapore, we do crazy things, right? We <laughs> send Christopher Chia to run it. And when Christopher Chia look at it, he say, hey, how come at 8, 8.45 before the library closes at 9? Long queue. What do you do? You have to open up more counters or else you have to have everybody work much later. Okay? All right. But you see, he has an IT background. And you look at the same problem. That's what he saw. Or the queue. Everybody say, open up more counters. Okay? That's the way it has been done by all libraries in the world. But he has a different solution. He said, ah, can IT help? Why are we doing all this processing ourselves by human? Okay? And that was the start of the RFID chip onto every library book. We are the first in the world to have that solution. Who implemented the solution is not important. You see, the idea is the one. Why did it not happen any other place in the world? Why are we the first one? Because we do not have an IT enabled person looking at it. That different pair of lens to look at the problem and asking a different question was the key. Okay? And so I call that IT enabled mindset. Okay? I think with that, okay, I, I'm sorry I did not do justice for uh, my very impromptu talk. Okay? But I hope okay, I have done some mindset change. <laughs> Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, question. Um, where should CT be taught in schools? Ah, very good question. Where should CT be taught? Uh, to answer my question, I answer in two ways. Okay. The first one, uh, I use the UK as a model. Okay. Uh, the UK started, it's now the fourth year. This this year will be the fourth year that they have implemented CT for <coughs> K to 12, literally K to 12. Okay? Uh, at a very young age, at about uh, primary three, they started teaching using Scratch, for example. In UK, you talk to any 10-year-old, they know Scratch. That's the power of putting something into the curriculum. You just talk. They may not be very good at it. Just like mathematics. Everyone do mathematics. You may not be very good at it, but everybody learn. Okay, so, uh, so it can be taught in many ways. Okay, and UK wanted an immersive one. And I'm not saying that they are very, very, very successful yet, huh? but it doesn't matter. If you put it in there, they will go, keep improving and it will get better. So they want it to be immersive. Uh, and I always refer to Kelvin uh, because I really like <coughs> what Kelvin is doing. Uh, that, in other words, they do it in sciences, in music, in this and that. And I've seen uh, in the U.S. also when I visited for sabbatical, talk to the people, they are talking about how to uh, integrate scratch in music lessons, for example. Okay? So it can be done. You can put in CT, a very simple version of it in all the other subjects. And the challenge is eventually to integrate them into all subjects. When I gave my talk at Fuchun, uh, one English language teacher told me that you can apply CT to it because in living and reading and comprehension, given a question, you need to break the question down, okay, decomposition, uh, understand the meaning of the new words, piece the meaning together, you know, decompose and re you know, combine the meaning, go to the, para to the paragraph that we are looking at, break, do the same thing and figure out where the in important answers are and come up with that. So that's one answer from the UK perspective, but the answer is every student should know. And uh, with coding, without coding, uh, not so important. Okay, I hope I answered part of it. If not, I think we can take it up uh, separately. Yeah. Okay. Any final questions? One more question? Okay. All right. Thank you very much.